Hi, welcome back out to the episode. In the last episode, we were talking a little bit about defining the acupuncture clock in Chinese medicine. And in that episode, we started talking about trinities. So in this episode, I am going to focus on how this clock helps define your personality and how you interact with the world. And so we're going to focus on the first and second trinity. We're going to do a quick review of what we covered in the last episode so you remember. And then we're going to focus on the first and second trinity. Now, there's three trinities. So in the next episode, I'm going to cover the last trinity of your interaction with the world. And then we're going to look at how you can tell where you're out of balance. And you're going to be out of balance in probably more than one area, but you, you'll be able to focus on key areas where you think you're way out of balance. And by using this clock, you're going to be able to see where you came from. And by looking forward, we'll look at how you can use that to help improve and change and help overcome these blocks. Okay, you ready to get started? Let's go. The clock in acupuncture helps you see how each phase of your life can progress. So this clock is going to show you each of the major learnings you're going to experience in each one of these phases. And that's going to help you understand your emotional growth and your growth potential. So it can also help you see where your growth might be stuck. And that's going to help you see some reasons for why that might be and how you can get over that. Let's review what we've covered so far. The clock, it's a 24 hour clock. We're gonna cut that up into two hour segments. So now we have 12 segments. Each one of these segments is assigned to one of the organs from the primary channels. The organ is gonna be most active during its own two hour segment. It takes energy to sleep and nutrients are transported in the blood. So if you're falling asleep during the day, or if you're waking up at night, then you probably don't have enough of the right nutrients in your blood. And that is called blood deficiency in Chinese medicine. These two hour segments are gonna be divided into three groups. And these three groups are gonna have certain themes in your development processes. So these development processes, they're cyclical life is cyclical so we have cycles like days and like years or your childhood your adolescence your life your death so life is cyclical and this clock models the energy flow of life and that's going to be the time after birth and before death let's look at the first trinity and the first trinity is about understanding the tools that you're going to be using in this life. And so this first trinity, the organs that it covers are going to be the lungs, the large intestine, the stomach, and the spleen. And so as an example, let's say you want to get something new for your computer, like a new mic or a new keyboard, or maybe you want a new kitchen appliance, or what's one that we always are looking for? Well, a new phone. Everybody wants a new phone. So when you first get this new thing, you have to learn how it works. So you're going to do that by opening up the box or by examining the object or reading the directions. Uh, not a favorite of mine, but some people do that. Or by watching maybe a YouTube channel, talking to your friends. But you're going to spend some time trying to figure out how this thing works. And so there's this phase where you're learning how it works and you're going to be thinking about, you know, how can I use this thing to make my life better? How does this relate to you? Well, the tool that you're given is going to be your body. And so this first phase is going to be about learning how your body works. And you're going to learn about it through your five senses. You're going to learn about it through your muscle movements and through muscle memory. And then, you know, you're going to start exploring your feelings and your sensations. And you start to think about how can you use your body to satisfy different needs? So maybe you want to be held by your mother. 
So you're going to think about, you're going to think about how you can use this body to crawl over to your mother so you can be held. And you're going to think about things that you like, sensations that you like, and sensations and things that you don't like. How about if we look at each one of the different organs and get an idea of what that is? In traditional Chinese medicine, the lungs, they take in the external world. So the lungs, they open up to the external world and they allow you to bring the external world inside yourself with every inhale. So you're going to take in what you need from the external world and you're going to process it. And when you're done processing it, you're going to exhale what you don't need. And that's going to be the same with the large intestine. The large intestine is going to take that food that you've eaten and it's going to remove what you need. And then it's going to eliminate what you don't need. In this part of the theory, the lungs and the large intestine are going to represent the five senses, which allow you to process the world around you. That's the first two organs. So the lungs and the large intestine. And then the next in the clock is going to be the stomach. And the stomach is responsible for processing our feelings about the sensations. So you're probably thinking, is there any logic or sense to that? Well, you know what? In the last couple decades, regular medicine has done a lot of research and they have found that there is a nervous system that encircles the gut. And that nervous system is responsible for sending signals to the brain, which are feelings. So our mood and our behavior is altered by the feelings and signals that are sent from the gut. Who knew, right? And then after that, our last one in this trinity is the spleen. So we have sensation. We now have feelings attached to this. And now we want to think about what that means or think about how that impacts us. And that is what the spleen does. The spleen gives us the energy and the ability to think about our interactions with the world. Okay, so that is the first trinity. The first trinity is about getting the lay of the land. It's about understanding how this new tool works and figuring out how you can use it to, you know, best make your world a positive experience. So what about the second trinity? Well, the second trinity is about stepping outside yourself. It's about socialization, interacting with other people. And the organs that are covered in this area are going to be the heart, the small intestine, the bladder, and the kidney. Oh, look, Nemo's come to visit. Say hi, Nemo. Say hi. He's a little neurotic. He had a pretty rough start. He started out in a barn as an abandoned kitten. And so so a little bit of a rough start. And so now we're just hoping that he can turn into a real cat one day. So let's see here. Let's go back to my example. You know when you bought yourself a new mic or, you know, a new keyboard, a phone or air fryer? And you spend some time, so now you know how it works, and you're going to start using it. So when you actually start using it, you start to figure out how it really works, right? Your, so your new mic, it sounds great, but you probably have to play with the distance from your mouth to the mic to figure out where you get your best sound. Or... Let's say with your phone, you might want to adjust volumes, brightness, adjust all sorts of things to make that phone work the best for you. So the second trinity is the next step in your evolution. So, and it's going to address your experiences with others. So your world's expanded. It's no longer just you. It's about how you can interact with society. And it deals with how you absorb and understand the society around you. 
And the first organ that you're going to run into on this clock is going to be the heart. So the heart is wrapped in terms of responsibility, self-responsibility, and empathy. And so part of being in society is the ability to negotiate and hear others and work towards a common cause. That's the bonus of society. That's why tribes united. That's why civilizations combined is to work towards a common cause of improving their lives. And this is wrapped in the ability to hear others. So when you can hear others, you're going to obtain feedback. So the next thing of negotiating and working with others is to also be able to hear and accept feedback. And that's part of the small intestine. So the next organ on this clock is going to be the small intestine. Now in traditional Chinese medicine, one of the roles of the small intestine is to separate the pure from the impure. So the pure is to take food and to separate it further and to clear out more of the pure that you can use and then to eliminate the impure, the stuff that you can't use. And so that's part of the ability to accept and discern feedback that's going to be useful for your negotiations or be useful to incorporate into a common cause to be useful to make a better solution. And you can almost think about it. There's that old saying, you might not remember it, but when I was growing up, I heard it a lot because I grew up on a farm, is to separate the wheat from the chaff. And so it's that ability to accept and process feedback with empathy. So after the small intestine channel, In this trinity, the next one you're going to move to is the bladder channel. The bladder channel really fascinates me. So what the bladder channel does is it establishes control limits. When you look at manufacturing, for a product to work, it has to be built within certain tolerances or ranges of acceptability. These ranges or tolerances, they're going to be defined by control limits. So when a product is no longer within these acceptable tolerances, you know, alarm's going to sound and production might halt. That is the bladder channel. That's what the bladder does for you. The bladder is where you can, where you're going to create your control limits on your interactions with other people in society. You know what creates control limits? It's going to be things like morality, bias, prejudices. They're all about you establishing your own control limits. And the more that you have, the narrower your range is and the fewer people that you're going to be able to interact with. And from that, we move to the kidneys. And this is a really, this is another organ that's really interesting because this is where you start to understand your place in the world. And you start to develop your sense of self-worth. We've talked about the clock. We've talked about the sequence. And we've talked about the first and second trinity. And in the next episode, I'm going to talk about the third trinity. And what happens during the third trinity. And then we get to do some really fun stuff where we start understanding some of the things, some of the experiences, some of the different thoughts that come up in each one of these areas when they're out of balance. And because every one of us will be out of balance in one of these areas because, you know, life happens. And as long as you're participating in life, you're going to get out of balance in, in one, if not all of them. So, so, and it doesn't have to be over everything, you know, it could be that you're in balance and then this one thing happens, this one thing happens and then that flips you out of balance and it's that one situation that can get you really out of balance in your heart channel or maybe in your spleen channel or something like that. Or you might see an area that you're out of balance and you want to backtrack through the previous 
segments or the previous segments of the clock to kind of get an idea of what your previous learnings were and where you might have suddenly come up with these different things that you're doing. And then you want to be able to look forward and see how you can take the future and help you improve or change something that you might not like that's going on. So every one of us is going to have unbalances in each of these different areas. And hopefully this episode can help you explore your own inner workings in more depth. And even more so in the next episode, hopefully that will give you even more clarity on some of your inner workings and give you some things to chew on. And until next time, I will catch you on the other side.